Good morning, everyone. Buenos dias. Welcome to Monday Morning Chapel. I am so excited to have you all here, and I also want to welcome our online audience. Thank you so much for joining us today. I have a very exciting, very exciting news for you all because today we have a very special speaker. His name is Stephen Conine, and he is um, he's a canvasser and he's a mobile one. And if you don't know what that means, probably during the week he'll get to explain you what it is that he does. He's also a missionary, and right now he's working in a farm in Colorado. So uh, before I, I invite him in, uh, at the beginning of this year, I bought this little book in Walmart. It says, a five-year question a day memory journal. And I wanna ask you the question for today. Um, the question for today is, and I want you to throughout the day think about it, and you don't have to give my, me an answer, but just think about, you know, about the question. The question for today is, how do you feel about second chances? So you can think about it. If you want to share, you're more than welcome. Discuss with friends. But that is the question for today. And I want to invite Stephen to come up. He's going to lead us with the opening um, prayer, and then he's going to go right into the message. Let us pray. Our dear and precious Heavenly Father, Lord, I want to thank you so much for this beautiful day you've given to us. Thank you so much for a new day to come and uh, live for you. Lord, I pray that as um, I speak, I share a little bit of um, your word and my story. I just pray that you bless, that you guide, and that your Holy Spirit might not just fill this room, but it may fill each one of our hearts, our minds, uh, giving us something practical to use uh, for our journey with you. We love you so much, Jesus. Be with us now. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, just want to uh, test. Is my lapel on? All right, good deal. Well, good morning. Good morning. I am seeing a lot of familiar faces, but I am also seeing a number of new faces, and I'm so thankful to have the privilege to be sharing with you guys uh, here uh, at Heartland this morning. I flew in about midnight last night, and I arrived here around 2 a.m. So my mind not, might not be as, uh, as sharp as, uh, as it could be, but uh, just pray for me as I share uh, just a few things from God's Word in my experience. Um, but yeah, like Daniela said, I've uh, done a fair amount of canvassing, and actually the, the, the topic for my week the, the theme that I would like to share with you guys, starting today and then ending uh, at the end of the week, is the missionary mind, having the mind of a missionary, right? And this is something that's very, very important to me. And over my experience, over the course of my life, I've seen that this is probably one of the most, if not the most important thing I can dedicate my time and my life towards. I want to open with the verse in, uh, in Jeremiah. It's a very, 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 very familiar verse. I'm sure there's been multiple, platform, uh, more, multiple sermons, maybe from this very platform, on these verses. But I just want to introduce this, uh, this message with, uh, with this verse. Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1. Picking it up in verse 4, the Bible reads, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Behold, I formed you in the belly... Before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. 
And before you came forth out of the womb, I sanctified you, and I ordained you a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not that I am a child, for you will go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Behold, be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. This was the call uh, from God to Jeremiah. And Jeremiah had a very, very specific work to do for the rest of his life. Jeremiah had a, a, a difficult job of being a, a representative of God to the uh, nation of Israel um, in the good times and uh, even in the bad times, right? It was a, a difficult job at times. Um, but friends, I believe that the Lord has places calling on each one of our lives. Everyone here, nothing excites me more than to see a group of young people who are deciding to live their lives for Jesus. It is like, it is so exciting to me. <laughs> there is, um, there is, I can guarantee there's nothing better to live for in this life than, than uh, a life completely surrendered, wholly sold out to Jesus. I'm going to share just a little bit of my story, and um, I believe that God has had a special call in my life, um, as well as every single person here, and it's not because I'm uh, just some super charismatic, talented, you know, dynamic preacher, or whatever the case is, right? I'm, I'm really not. Um, but I believe that God has called um, my life, and I believe that God has a powerful call on, on each one of your guys' life because you're here, right? And if you're here, um, we have to be willing in surrendering our lives to Jesus, right? A a as long as God can have that willingness, that surrender, we're going to talk about these themes throughout the rest of the week, um, but I believe that God can do powerful things in and through your life. I was, um, I'm going to give a little bit of uh, a background just to uh, set up some context for who I am and then uh, for the rest of the week. Um, I was actually born to an Adventist family in Southern California from San Diego. Best, uh, best weather in the world is there. And um, yeah, grew up Adventist, but not really knowing much about uh, who Ellen White was. Uh, pretty, uh, pretty Southern California. No, not to cast any shade on Southern California. I love, I love that place. Um, but it was a pretty nominal Adventist family, right? And something very unfortunate happened. Um, in 2007, my parents split, and for the next 12 years, I hadn't seen my father. I didn't see my father for the next 12 years. And so growing up, we were uh, kind of a middle class uh, family, didn't uh, have everything, but didn't want anything. We weren't in need of anything. We were, you know, my parents both had stable jobs, and it was, yeah, it was quite nice growing up, having, uh, having both parents. But then 2007, I was 11 years old, and one day my, my father um, disappeared. And for the next 12 years, I didn't see him, right? And during these uh, following uh, years after my, uh, my father left, we were very, very poor. My mom was always between jobs. We went on government welfare and uh, food stamps and all these things just to try to make it by. I started working at Subway restaurant when I was... Uh, 14 years old, just to help, uh, you know, pay for our food and, you know, different things like this. I went canvassing. Um, there's, there's, there's a huge story there, but um, I was actually in South Texas at a boarding academy, and it was at this boarding academy I found this, uh, this group of students, and at first, myself as well as the, my rest of the, the rest of my dorm mates, we saw these guys and we're like, man, these guys, uh, these guys are kind of weird. <laughs> They're like all like in these plaid button-down shirts. Some of them had like suspenders on and like, like, who are these people? We thought they were Mormons. Like, yeah, don't hang out with those Mormon guys, man. They're gonna, gonna you know, play with your mind or something, right? But um, turns out there's, this was a group of students from a, a little school in Arkansas called Wachita Hills College. And I had, I had amen. <laughs> I had never heard of a school like this before in my life, right? 
But they, uh, they came this, to my school. I was just in 10th grade in the dorms. And uh, the first guy that I ever met, his name was Jarrell Bell. And he went on a walk with me Sabbath afternoon. And after we got on, uh, back from this walk, we went to my dorm. And he said, hey, man, you want to have a, have a Bible study? And I looked at him like, I mean, I'm already Adventist. Like, <laughs> you want to have a Bible study? Like, why? You know, like, I, I'm already here, you know? Um, he's like, no, just to, just to, you know, find out more why we believe what we believe kind of thing. I'm like, all right, sure, why not? So we studied Daniel chapter 4. And I was, like, completely blown away. I was just absolutely amazed. And I'm like, that's in there? That's crazy, you know? I'd never, up to that point, even though I grew up Adventist, I'd never actually gotten into the Bible and, like, studied it personally or with, even with a, another person. Like, it's, you know, Sabbath school, and you go to Pathfinders, and you're required to memorize the, the memory verses for the week and stuff and all the rest, right? This was my experience. And not until this experience, you know, I, I, I came in contact with these consecrated students I didn't, I didn't really know what it was like to have like a personal relationship with Jesus. After that, they invited me to go canvassing with them, and I'm like, I don't know what that is, but if it means uh, hanging out with you guys, uh, sure, I'll, you know, sign me up. I'll, I'll, I'll do it. And so I, uh, I went canvassing for the first time in 2000, uh, December 2011, and uh, didn't like it too much. It wasn't, uh, wasn't my favorite thing. But then someone sponsored me right after that canvassing program to go to a GYC. Right? I had no idea what this was. Some insurance conference or something, no, no, no clue, right? But someone paid for me. And so I went up there, and the first couple of messages, I started just like uh, playing Angry Birds on my phone and stuff, you know, hanging out with friends and just totally not paying attention. But I was in one uh, message, I think it was uh, Ivor Meyer or something like this, and he started, you know, talking about some things, and I'm like, man, it's kind of interesting, right? He, 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 was, he was sharing some insights in the Bible that I, I hadn't heard before. And then after that, I went to a, another message by Dwayne Lemon. And man, he was talking about the Holy Spirit, the outpouring of the latter rain, the, necessary, the necessity to separate those things that are separating our soul from our Savior. And I was like, convicted. I think that was the first time in my life I ever experienced like real conviction. I'd already been baptized as a, as a kid. But this was like something real to me. I remember that night I went back to my hotel room and I got my music. All the music I had on this like little, you know, tablet thing, and I deleted everything all at once. I'm like, man, I don't want anything to do with this, this worldly stuff that's going to be separating me from Jesus, right? And there, I, I believe I got my first personal Bible, and I gave my heart to Jesus. says, Lord, I want to live for you. And I'm so thankful, because since then, like, I have, I, have, I have not looked back on the world. Now, friends, mind you, the Christian experience, the life of a missionary is not all, uh, it's, it's not all rainbows and butterflies, Right? It's not smooth sailing the whole way. The moment you, you commit your life to Jesus, Satan's going to attack. Satan's going to work extra hard, right? But this is nothing to be uh, discouraged of. It's actually something I, I look at as a, as, a, as a challenge. Saying, all right, Satan, you're going to attack. I believe, I, I believe my God is stronger. I believe he can help me through these things. So I, I canvassed for uh, the next summers, 2012, 2013. Completely changed my life. I mean, I, I learned so much in those canvassing programs. Uh, but mind you, I was still in high school, and I would go canvassing, and then I'd get the check at the end of the summer and give it to my mom to help put food on the table, right? All through high school, I came back from that boarding school, went back to California, and me, my mom, my sister lived in one room, shared a room in my, in my uncle's upstairs, um, yeah, uh, bedroom. Um, he had a, his bedroom, then me, my mom, and sister uh, slept in, you know, in one room. My mom and sister shared a bed. I slept on the floor, pretty much like... Yeah, all through, like, freshman, junior, freshman, sophomore, junior year, right? This is, the, this is my experience. But then something, uh, something happened in 2013. My mom um, gets remarried to uh, a very kind man, uh, a nice man, uh, but a man who had means, right? And over, over the course of one day, I remember uh, my mom walks into the room and says, uh, Sonia, Stephen, Sonia's my sister. She's like, Sonia, Stephen, we're moving. And I'm like... We're moving. Where are we moving to? And I was like, the beach. I'm like, we're moving to the beach? What? How, like, how, how are we going to get there? Like, what, what? My mom's, uh, my mom's uh, husband, in one day, purchased a little house, a tiny house, right on the beach, just for my, my mom. Right? And uh, my mom was looking at houses on the computer. She saw this one she liked. She showed him. The following day, he calls her. He's like, yeah, remember that, sh that house you were showing me? 
on the computer. She's like, yeah. He's like, yeah, whenever you want to come pick up the keys, it's yours. My mom's like, amazing, right? And so I'll never forget that door. We're moving to the beach. I'm like, that's amazing. So overnight, pretty much, we went from like, you know, in my, my life went from like, you know, scraping by food stamps, giving my mom all the canvassing money to going to the beach. My mom shortly after got remarried to my uh, stepfather. And yeah, went to, went to live with him. And my sister actually went up to Washington. My senior year of high school, I lived by myself in a little house on the beach with my mom only living about a mile away in, a, in, a, in, a, in another beach house, right? Um, and it was, it, was, it was pretty amazing. I went to, I'm saying all this for a reason. Check it out, friends. I went to uh, high school, and I would have, like, friends over and different things. And after the summer of 2013, I knew that's, that's when I knew I was going to actually go to Watchet Hills College. After that summer canvassing, I'm like, you know what? I don't want to apply anywhere else. This is what I want to do. I went to Washington Hills College. Um, but just before I graduated, and as I was preparing to go to Arkansas to, to go to school, I had friends in high school that were saying, Stephen, why are you going to Arkansas for school? We're going to go to college. We're going like, to get a degree, save a whole, you know, get a good job, save up a whole bunch of money so we can live the life that you're living right now. I would wake up in the morning, go surfing, Go to my one class. I had one class my, my second semester, senior year. Then after that, go play golf all afternoon. Then after that, hang out with some friends. Go grab a bite to eat, some like Thai place or something, and just you know, hang out at home. It was, it was, it was, I'm not going to lie, friends. It was an easy life. It was very comfortable. But actually, that's why, I'll, that's why I'll never live in California again, at least in San Diego, California. It's vacation land, man. I'm not gonna, I would get way too comfortable. And I said, no, I'm going, to, I'm going to Arkansas to go to school because there's something more meaningful there's something that's more fulfilling in life than surfing, friends, golf, all the money I wanted. I had a car. I, I, didn't, I wasn't that rich, but I had access, right? There was something much more meaningful than this. And going to this little school in Arkansas was actually one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life. Amen. Going to this school set the foundations, the platform. There's this, there's this guy, his name is Pastor Carl. I don't know if you ever, anyone ever heard of him. I took eight classes over the course of two years from this man, Pastor Carl. I was so thankful. Set some really good foundations, right? And I'm sharing this because there was one time I was canvassing in 2014. Uh, it was the winter 2014. I was canvassing in uh, South Texas. And there was a, a good friend of mine. His name was Daniel Gomez. He gave this, this sermon while we were canvassing. He's like, why are you canvassing? Why are you at Watch the Hills? Why are you participating in this Cole Porter program? Is it because you need to raise funds? Is it because of the money? Is it because it's required as a school? Why are you here? And I thought about this. And I'm like, I'm not here because, because of the money. My school is paid for if I, if I need it to be. I'm here because... I believe God is really calling me here. I really believe God is calling me to be a missionary. I, I like the experience. There's nothing more fulfilling than the experience of seeing someone at the door understand what you're trying to say. There's nothing more fulfilling than, than, than telling someone about the love of Jesus when they're going through an exceedingly difficult time. Right? There's nothing more than, than connecting a piece above the storm with someone who just lost a loved one. Or a great controversy with someone who's been trying to understand what's been going on in the world today, right? These things were the fulfilling things in life. This is why I was able, willing to, to, to forsake anything. I remember I called my mom after that sermon, and I'm like, hey, mom, you know what? I want to have an experience of faith. And uh, I, was, I was inspired to do this because I had some friends at, at, at the school who completely, <laughs> went, they, they went to Watch the Hills completely contrary to their parents' wishes, my roommate, his mom was livid with him because he went to watch the Hills College. She's like, I will not support this decision. I will not support you anything financially. My friend graduated from Watch the Hills eight semesters, four years, debt free. Every single semester, God came through for him in a powerful way. I mean, in a different way. He would canvas and he'd get, you know, <laughs> he, he, he'd find someone in the canvassing field, completely, you know, a stranger. Develops a great relationship with him, and they help pay for his college. He gets random checks in the mail, anonymous checks, to help go towards his tuition. He went through eight semesters 
completely by faith. I remember like, hearing this, I'm like, that's the experience I want. And um, I called my mom, like, Mom, I think I want to have this experience of, uh, you know, living by faith. And I don't want you to pay for my school anymore. I want, I want to completely canvas my way through school. My mom was like, oh, Stephen, that's awesome. You live by faith. You do what you need to do to, uh, to, 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 to make it through school and, you know, have that faith. That's awesome. But whenever you need anything, just let me know. Like, <laughs> Thanks, Mom. <laughs> right? I, I wanted that experience. I wanted that experience to not know. Fast forward, I, 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 I did two years of Watch the Hills. Um, some things happened. <laughs> Mom uh, flies out to Arkansas, puts me in the car, drives me to Andrews University, signs all the papers, pays all the fees, says, you're going to Andrews whether you like it or not. And I'm like, more on that story later. But after one semester at Andrews, I was like, Lord, I want to I wanna follow you 100%. And I wasn't too sure, to be honest, if the God was calling me to Andrews. So I remember, I said, Mom, after my first semester, I'm, I'm not going to go back to Andrews. I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to study and learn how to be a missionary. I talked to some, some of my teachers at Andrews, and, and, and if God is calling you to, to, to university, Andrews, something like this, like follow his call. This was me personally. This was God calling on my life, and I didn't feel at that time that God was calling me to Andrews. I talked to my professors, and I said, you know what? I'm studying something about you know, education. I'm studying something about missionary work, and, and it's a little bit different than what I'm seeing here in my classes. My teachers were saying, Stephen... Um, I, 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 spent one, I, I went and sought each one of them, one by one, in, in, in private. And I said, what I'm reading is not really what I'm seeing here. Right? I wasn't trying to be fire and brimstone or anything. I was just trying to reconcile this, this, this cognitive dissonance I was experiencing. And a lot of my teachers says, well, you know, this and that, you know, it's, it's, it's helpful to have a degree and all these things. And, and mind you, like I said, if God is calling you to, 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 to have a degree, like, that's, that's God's calling on your life. But... For me personally, I was like, I want I wanna, the missionary training. And I had one professor that was honest with me. And he said, Stephen, I know exactly what you're talking about. I know what you've been reading. And he's like, what you're looking for? I'm sorry, here in the theology department, we don't offer. I remember, like, I was like, okay, that's, that's it. That's all I need. I went to Philadelphia to go uh, speak at a little revival out there. And at this time, I told my mom, I'm not, I'm not going back to, to, to Andrews. My mom's like, Stephen, you better you know, get your butt over back there to Andrews. You get back in those classes. And I'm like, I can't. And I remember my mom was like, we're cutting you off completely. My friend asked me to fill up gas in his car. And as I'm filling up gas in his car, um, I, I drive his car to the gas station and I put my card in. And it says, like, transaction denied. And I'm like, what? So I put it in again. Transaction denied. I go on my, my bank account and I look at it. And I see I have 34 cents in my bank account. This is, I'm not, I'm not planning on going back to Andrews. My parents are cutting me off. I had no support. I didn't know where my next, you know, income was going to come from. 34 cents in my bank account. And I remember thinking to myself, praise the Lord. Finally, I am so thankful. I finally get to have this experience where I get to live by faith. I finally get to have this experience where I'm not just going to have, you know, mom and dad pay for everything. Finally to have this experience where I get to actually, you know, take step and follow, follow God at every step of the way. Friends, I share these things not to boast or not to brag about, you know, the, the experiences that I've been through. But, but the reason I share these things is because at every step in your life, God has called you to something specific. And we, shouldn't have, we should not be people who are bought and sold. We should not be going with the, 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 the tide of things. Just as the wind blows that way or the tide pushes that way. Friends, we need to be as true to the needle as to the pole. If God has called you to be a missionary in life, which I believe God has called everyone here to be, then we have a duty to follow that call. Regardless of anything that anyone else says. I'm going to read one last verse and we'll close in Luke chapter, 25, chapter 14, verse 25, it says, in verse 26, it says, If any man comes to me and hates not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yes, 
and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. That call would be a little easier if it says, if you, if you, if you don't hate okra, you cannot follow me. If you, if you hate okra, yeah, if you don't hate okra, you can, you know. No, no, no. He says, if you, if you, if you don't hate father and mother and, 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 and your loved ones, he's not literally talking about hating them. But if you count them more important than following me, you cannot follow me. Friends, there is an important call. A serious call. The most important decision you'll ever make in your life. Are you going to follow Jesus? Are you going to live for him? Are you going to be a missionary? If, you, if, 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 if your answer to that call is yes, friends, I can guarantee you you made the best decision in your life. And, and God has, has, has plans more than what you can ask or think. Let us, uh, let us go ahead and pray. As we continue throughout the week, we'll dive into this, uh, this, this concept more. How practically can I be a missionary? How can I have the mindset of a missionary? Amen? Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, I want to thank you so much for the many blessings you've given to us. Lord, I share my story not to uh, cast any uh, light or bring any uh, undue credit to me, but Lord, I share these things because I want to demonstrate, I want to I communicate how you have been faithful in my life. How there is nothing sweeter in this life, more than money, more than riches, more than poverty, more than anything is following Jesus. Lord, I pray that these students here within the sound of my voice, anyone online, may dedicate themselves wholeheartedly to Jesus. We love you so much. We can't wait to see you. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, Stephen, for that uh, powerful message and for sharing his testimony with us. How many of us were blessed? Amen. I know more, uh, more, of un- more than one of us can relate to only having 34 cents in our bank accounts, right? Missionary life is no joke. But I thank you so much for joining us today, and I want to welcome you to join us tomorrow at 8 a.m. Um, so have a blessed day.